Bahari City Council, which is composed of Mayor Jeff Lehman and 10 councillors, holds a lot of meetings, such as General Committee meeting, Finance and Corporate Services Committee meeting. There are other committees where Bahari residents are also members of. For example, the Town and Gown Committee and the Heritage Bahari Committee. You can watch these meetings live on the city's official YouTube channel. The link is below in the description. But how do these different committees work together? How bylaws come into existence? And how Barry residents can get their voices heard by the city council? To get answers to these questions, we talk to Wendy Cook. She is the city clerk and director of legislative and court services. <laughs> no problem. Good, how are you? Good, good, good. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. I... No problem. Yeah. So I just wanted to get a sense about, you know, what are the programs that, you know, City of Barry offers uh, when it comes to uh, housing and other social programs? Um, so the different services that Barry, City of Barry doesn't um, take care of housing, that is strictly done by the county. We provide them um, we provide them a budget every year for those services. So it would be amb ambulance care, um, child and human services, and um, like social services. So that would be the social affordable housing and um, long-term care. And they take care of that for the entire county, including Barry and Aurelia, because Barry and Aurelia are single tier municipalities. So there are services that the county provides to um, municipalities such as Innisfil, Springwater, um, um, outside of what uh, they provide to Barry, including like garbage and recycling. Um, the cities of Barry and Aurelia, we take care of all the municipal type services, roads, road repair, um, waste, wastewater, um, whereas the county would take care of that for the county itself. Like yeah, that's sounds... the county. Yeah. Okay, that's what makes sense. So so what is what is exactly the tier one uh, municipality you said? Like what is what is the difference between from other other types of municipalities? Okay, so there's um two Two to th like there's three different types of levels of uh, municipalities. So Barry is a single tier, so it has no, um, it doesn't have an upper tier. So the county or a regional government would be considered an upper tier government, and lower tier governments would re municipal governments would report up through, not report up through, they um, participate at the regional level as well. So for instance, in the county of Simcoe. Um, the municipalities such as Innisfil would have elected officials that sit at the Innisfil level as well as the county level. Okay, so Barry Barry doesn't have any Barry doesn't have any elected officials that sit uh, we, at the county level. So because our because we provide them a contribution to the um, for the the uh, human services the social services and the um, ambulance. Um, we have, they have a human services committee. So we have four representatives on that committee. So that would be the mayor, the deputy mayor and two members of council. And that, that committee kind of, um, the mandate of that committee takes into account the services that the county provides to the city. Okay, so say they you know, try to, they are the representative or they try to hold the Simcoe County accountable for those, those services. Because I lived in uh, Mississauga before moving mm -hmm. to Barry, and then we had a peel region. And, yes, you know, I and, used to live in Brampton, so yeah. So. <laughs> okay, so that's that's a similar similar setup where you know some of the services yeah. are provided by, yeah. And you know, I've been attending you know, a lot of, lot of meetings when it comes to uh, city council. So can you just briefly talk about what are the, some of the important meetings that you know, are held by the city council and, and their significance. Um, do you want me just to speak to like, do you want to, do you want me to speak to the, the structure of council or do you want me to speak to like things that have been happening at the meetings? Yeah, so both the structure of the council as well as some of the important meetings. The structure of council is we have um, the kind of, we have a lower level, which is advisory committees. So which are our citizen-based committees and 
The advisory committees also have representation by one or two members of council. And we are kind of, um, some of them are just ones that our council has developed or some, of, and some of them are mandated by the province. So for instance, a heritage berry committee and the accessibility advisory committee were legislated to have those two committees in place. So other committees we have, we have a communities in bloom committee. We also have an active transportation and sustainability advisory committee, a seniors advisory committee. Um, so we have various advisory committees. Then the next level would be our reference committees. We have two reference committees. So those advisory committees would report up through the reference committees to general committee and then to council. So our reference committees are city building, which takes into account um, our, our development services, economic development, those type of matters, and then <clears throat> and roads and, and whatnot, and infrastructure, roads and infrastructure. Then the other committee is Finance and Corporate Services Committee. Basically, it's self-explanatory. It takes care yeah. of like all our finance matters and anything regarding corporate services. So enforcement facilities, recreation services. So that those are kind of things that were that, that committee considers. And then the minutes, the reports from those committees or any recommendations would then flow up to, to general committee. So that's one of our standing committees. And that's one of the ones we have on Monday nights. So every other Monday night you have general and then a council meeting. So general committee is where staff can provide reports with recommendations. Um, general committee is where our budget is considered um, with, because general committee allows for more open dialogue than council. Um, council is a little bit more formal of a body for members of council. Um, staff will make recommendations and staff reports to members of council for members of council's consideration. Um, and they can either um, adopt or approve what staff is recommending, or they can amend it, or they can disapprove it. That's, that's totally um, up to members of council. Members of council are also allowed to put items forward on the general committee agenda. So they can put items for discussion. So if they want, um, for example, um, staff to look into putting a stop sign at a certain intersection, they have the opportunity to put those items forward to ask staff to look at those matters. We also have another standing committee. It's the planning committee. So that is where all our planning public meetings under the Planning Act occur. And any um, staff reports concerning development or development applications in the city of Barrie are considered by planning committee. And general committee and planning committee um, are also all members of council. So any recommendations that come from planning committee or general committee then would flow up to council for final adoption. So, um, so council can still discuss, amend um, recommendations at that point um, if they would like. And, and that's also bylaws are presented to council for adoption. So um, one of your questions was, the journey of a bylaw. So basically what happens is um, at general committee or at planning committee, staff will present a report recommending that a bylaw be passed or an, an amendment to a bylaw be passed. For, for instance, um, the planning committee, they would recommend an amendment to the zoning bylaw. So once the planning committee um, approves a recommendation to amend the zoning bylaw, that recommendation would then go to city council for adoption. Once council adopts that recommendation, then the following council meeting, the bylaw, the, the formal bylaw itself would be presented to council for, for adoption. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very helpful information. So basically there are uh, the advisory committees you talk about are, uh, most often one or two uh, counselors and then you know citizens uh, are represented in that and then from there yes. it goes to planning committee city building uh, finance and corporate services committees you know uh, those are some of those committees and from there it goes to the general committee and then is, is it correct then the, every every monday you have uh, a general committee general committee meeting 
we have so so the advisory committees would go up to the reference committees. Um, reference. Again, I'm sorry, I didn't explain it very well, but they go up to the, which is finance and corporate services and city building. Then those two committees feed up to general committee, which feeds up to council. Planning committee is kind of its own separate standing committee. They don't really have anything that reports up to them. Um, so general committee happens one Monday night and then city council happens the following Monday. Planning committees generally are on Tuesday evenings, um, the night after a council, like the day after a council meeting. So, you know, specifically for citizens, you know, if they want to assist uh, citizens and residents, if they want to participate in, in, in any business conducted by uh, mm -hmm. uh, by city, how, at what level they can participate, and how how can they uh, go about doing it? Okay, so members of the public are um, we because we can have people in person currently. Um, we broadcast all our meetings, our advisory committee meetings on YouTube. So members of the public, we publish our agendas for the meetings four days in advance. We have a link to the YouTube channel um, on our agenda so that a person can just link to the meeting if they would like to watch it. Um, mem you know, sometimes the advisory committees will invite um, citizens or organizations to provide information to them. Um, and they will also be given a Zoom link or if we were in person, attend in person. Um, at the reference committees, if somebody wants to come forward, um, for instance, we had a matter last week where somebody had concerns with some water charges that they were, that were being applied to their property. So they had the opportunity to provide um, an open delegation to the Finance and Corporate Services Committee to explain their situation. Um, they, they're given five minutes to speak. The committee, um, in this case, um, ask staff to work with them, as well as allow them to go on a payment plan. So members of the public can engage with members of council at the reference committee level. At um, general committee, we do not afford the opportunity for members of the public to provide deputations at that point, um, they are afforded to city council, which is the following week. So they would be coming when um, just, they would be able to provide their deputation prior to council uh, giving final adoption to any of the recommendations from, any from the motions from general committee or planning committee. Now, public participation at the planning committee meeting, we have the statutory public planning public meetings that we have to have when amendments to the zoning bylaw or the official plan occur. So members of the public can register in advance to attend these meetings. Or they are able to speak at these meetings. Um, they can provide correspondence in any matter, um, not just planning committee matters. They're able to, members of the public can correspond with council through our office if they want any um, attention brought to a matter they're in support or have concern with on, on an agenda. Yeah, that's great. So, just a couple of you know small clarifications. I, I know you are, you, are, you are very busy. So, one of the things I wanted to know, for example, I am a I'm not a citizen, Canadian citizen, but I'm a permanent resident. And yeah. some of the students, you know, who just come here on on a student visa, some come on you know different different visas. So, is there any restrictions on uh, what kind of you know, for example, if you want to participate in be a part of any any committee? Uh, for example, is a cap and gown yeah. committee. Is, is, there a, is there any restrictions for that? Um, no, we just ask that um, you are a resident of Barrie. Um, we, because generally you would want somebody that participates on your committees to live in the community, unless you're representing an organization. Like, so just say you're representing Georgian College, but you live in Aurelia. That's a little bit different. But if you're a, a citizen representing Come, coming on as a citizen, one of the main qualifications is that you're a, a resident of Barry. Yeah, and some of the some of the you know municipalities in the U.S. Uh, you know, there was a talk about giving voting rights. You know, you might not be the right person to ask, but giving voting rights to uh, non non citizens is that is that something came, ever came up uh, in, in Barry during oh, the it's, meeting? It's come up a lot, um, but. The Municipal Elections Act is governed by the province of Ontario, and that's what we use to administer our elections here in Barrie, like, or all clerks in Ontario. 
we have to follow the provisions in the Municipal Elections Act. And in the Municipal Elections Act, it, pre it prescribes what an eligible elector is. And at this time, an eligible elector, it has to be a Canadian citizen. Okay, so yeah. we have to work within those prescribed rules that the province gives us. Yeah, yeah that definitely makes sense. And, and one, one last question about, about for example, last uh, you know, few weeks back, there was a, an amendment to the uh, zoning bylaw. So I you know there was a lot of, lot of discussion. So I was trying to understand at, at what point, for example, the councillors, so once you provide them uh, with, the, with the staff, staff report what kind of right. during and after the staff report what kind of interactions usually uh, city staff uh, has with with the with the councillors and the mayor is that a regular communication you have meetings i'm trying to understand what goes on in the behind the scene uh, when when the bylaws are being uh, written okay so we can't conduct like we can't con council can't conduct any decision making behind behind closed doors, unless, unless it's a confidential meeting under the Municipal Act. So basically what happens is their decision-making, unless it's under Municipal Act that they can be in closed session, any decision-making, any motions has to be done in public. So basically um, what they would do behind, like in between meetings is that they may ask staff like, so for, for example, we have general committee coming up on Monday night. We have the staff report concerning our long range financial plan. Members of council can reach out to staff in advance of the meeting to ask questions of clarification um, on the staff reports or if they're not, you know, or if they want to gain an understanding because the long range financial plan, for example, is a very heavy document and has tons of information in it. And sometimes if you don't have a financial brain, for instance, um, you know, sometimes you may need that extra clarification. So members of council are able to speak with um, staff outside of the meeting and get clarification on the staff reports. Um, if you're talking about the specific zoning bylaw that was occurred a few weeks ago, um, when questions are asked at, at, at planning committee and staff come back with responses. Um, we generally try and put a memo on our circulation list so that the public keeps informed to what the answers to some of the questions are that were raised. So we have the, um, the, the second suites, um, the, um, what's the second suites? It was um, like our backyard, yeah, second dwelling units on the same property. Second dwelling units, thank you. And the, the title costs. <laughs> the second dwelling units, right? So a lot of questions were asked at that meeting by a council or members of council to staff. So, and we know that members of the public are always listening into our, like listening to our meetings because they're open to the public via the YouTube channel. So we, we um, any questions that were asked, they were answered in a staff memo so that that way members of the public can see what staff's responses were to their to their questions in advance of the council meeting. So and at the council meeting is when we allow for deputations to occur. And we did have some deputations on that matter. I think we had yeah. quite a few actually. Um, so that's the members of the public's opportunity to again, readdress members of council. So with planning applications, you kind of get, um, for lack of a better term, two kicks at the can. You can come to the planning public meeting and, and say you're, and speak to you whether you're in support of the application or you're not in support of the application. And if it carries through and you're still not in support, be prior to council approving the motion to amend the zoning bylaw, you have that other opportunity to speak again, whether you're concerned or in support of it. So what would happen generally is once a council meeting happens, the bylaws either come to that council meeting, which I believe they did that in that case, or if they're not ready, then we put them on the next council agenda for consideration. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, because I, 
I, I was watching a lot of meetings and I see in a lot of those meetings, you are there and you know, they reach out to you for a lot of information. And after coming to know that, you know, every, all the business is, you know, conducted in front of a public on live camera. So I, I can imagine the, the kind of pressure that puts on you to provide the information because you have to be factually correct because the decision is, is made. Uh, so what, like, how do you feel about that? You know, as you know, being asked so much uh, question on, on the spot, and you know, able to provide that correct information. The yeah, responsibility of yeah, sometimes it's hard because like <laughs> you really have to take a pause. Like generally, I try and take a pause before I answer the question, just to kind of collect my thoughts on on what they're what they're asking. Um, if it's not, sometimes they'll refer a question to me. And it might be better suited for another staff member. So I will say like, oh, thank you for the question, but so-and-so would be able to probably better provide you with a response. So I, I can redirect. Generally, they ask me questions, like my department includes uh, enforcement and um, obviously council, like the council secretariat who takes the minutes and everything at the meetings. And so generally my questions are procedural that they ask me um, at the meeting. So like, can I put an amendment forward? So I'm trying to think like, so trying to help them word an amendment at the meeting can be challenging sometimes, especially if, there, if there's more technicality to it. So if there's, sometimes if there's more technicality to an amendment that they may be putting forward, I do ask for a, a bit of a, like a five minute break just so I can work with the member of council. And the mayor is very kind and he usually, um, he, he's usually allow, allows me to do that, especially if it is something more technical. Generally though, as long as we get the, generally I can get the gist of the wording that they're providing and prepare an amendment fairly quickly. Yeah, because I, you, you talked about the Finance and Corporate Services Committee and this very high general dentistry, I know they were there trying, you know, they were asking uh, exemptions yes. from the bylaw and Councillor, after that, there was another about gun range and Councillor Morales asked uh, you whether, uh, you know, the delegation gets one five minutes per person or the four entire delegation. And then, you know, and, and I thought that was very, you know, a nitty gritty of how the business is conducted. And you said, no, it's mm -hmm. five minutes per delegation. And then, you know, <laughs> I conduct. so that's, that's yeah. you know, impressive small, you know, uh, bits of information that, that you need to know. So my last question is about uh, uh, what, are the, what are the challenges when it comes to uh, participation of public, when it comes to, you know, the city's business, there might, there might not be challenges, but what are the challenges when it comes to public participation in, in a town's uh, business and what has done, uh, what, what the city has done, you think, good in terms of you know, eliminating those and you know, having citizens participate more uh, in, in the business? I don't think we really have any challenges with the members participating. Um, it's different right now because yeah. we're <laughs> in a different, a different time, but we have a very like, we try and do as much business and, and this is most municipalities. We do try and do as much business in public as we can. There are times that we do have to go into closed session and discuss things that we can do under the Municipal Act, but we don't, when we're in closed session, we don't pass motions um, except to come out of closed session. Like we have to, they have to approve to come out of closed session, but we don't generally pass any like motions in closed session. Um, we, I think um, having our YouTube channels um, has been really helpful. Yeah. to allowing participation. We, during the planning public meetings, we have people here manning the telephones um, during the meeting. So, because when you're in an in-person public meeting, you can be sitting in the audience and decide at the last minute, hey, I, I think I wanna speak. Well, we have to, we were trying to mimic that with our planning public meetings. That's why the mayor will read out the phone number, the email address, and we have staff here in our office that if somebody calls in or emails in, that we can get them a link to the Zoom call so that they can participate. It takes, sometimes it takes a little longer to get, because of that, to get the members on the line 
or to part to like participate, but that's just more of a technology challenge, not a challenge with like a member participating in general. Yeah, but yeah, we're, that's we're pretty open. We're pretty open with having members of the public participate, and we're very cognizant. Like, if for instance, if we for some of our meetings, if we cannot get on the YouTube channel within and we have technical difficulties, like we will stop the meeting and reschedule it or pause the meeting and take a recess until we can get that YouTube channel working again to ensure that the public can participate. So it's been more of a, like the Zoom stuff has been more, it's been, knock on wood, we've had like little challenges with it and we've got a lot of positive feedback. I think the way that we have had our meetings open when we've not really been open to the public physically, so to speak. Yeah, and and you know, I, I a lot of meetings I hear you saying, oh, well, we are not live yet, and then you ask everybody to wait, and then once we are live, you say, like, okay, now we can start the business. Yeah. So I, I hear that a lot of times. So. <laughs> So yeah, so thank you. That's that's all my questions. But I appreciate, and you know, I was trying to understand uh, myself, and also for the for the viewers and how the business is conducted, and most importantly, what how they can participate more in in you know uh, in in citizen business and you know be more more active residents. So uh, thank you so much, Wendy, for your time. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Of course, no problem. Okay. Have all a good right. afternoon. Yeah. You too. Bye. Bye now.